And his field was so amazingly green. And his proceeds was much. He never thought for one minute. Thank you, God, for this abundance. He put his hand in his chest and he says, Wow, I have done it, isn't it? I remember a time in my, in my secular walk in life, because this is still part of my walk in life, giving to God. I used to nod my head and say, well done, Wilson. It's going good. It's going good because the job was going good, the employment was going good, the work was going good, and the money was coming from it. And I was able to say, hmm, things are good. A neighbor came out and asked me, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. The neighbor says, why do you spend hours washing your car? 2005. I was driving a 97 Opel Astro. It was white, so you could imagine every dint on it is visible. But this man was confused. He had a new car next door. He doesn't wash it. It's covered in dust. But this guy with an old car spent hours washing his car. And I looked at him and I said, I came from Cameroon as an asylum seeker. Never with a dream to own a spoke of a bicycle. God has given me a car. Did I have every reason to praise him? Washing this car is saying, God, thank you. I can drive a car. We don't know the abundance of what God is giving us. We don't know the abundance in which we are swimming. When you go home, do this metaphoric act. Lift up your heels and try to look through your neighbor's fence. When you come back down, you will say, thank you, Lord. You'll be able to say, truly, I did not say thank you on Sunday in church, but I will say thank you on Monday today. Because all is making sense. Our gracious God is present and the farmer refused to recognize the power of where this was coming from. And the farmer chooses to break down his barn and pile it instead of asking the neighbors, what do you need? Instead of saying to the neighbors, I got plenty, could you take some? It's not all about selling. And God says to him, you fool. But we ask the question, where is your treasure? For where your treasure is, there will be also your heart. And so in 21, he says, so is he who lays treasure for himself and is not rich towards God and does fail to understand life's true objective. The true objective of life is our connection with our Father. The truth about the journey is we will be ready for some who have come to age. We will be ready for some who have prolonged illness. Then they might say, okay, the doctor is telling me it will be next week, it will be three weeks' time. I can ask God for forgiveness when I know that one day. But to each one of us here, we don't even have the next hour guaranteed. Today is the day. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So that if tomorrow doesn't come, we are covered. The price has been paid. Paid completely in full. All we need to do is to surrender to the one that has paid that ultimate price. I finish with this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guide your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Let me pray. Father, oh dear God, for your noise has been made from the most rustic vessel. May your Holy Spirit manifest amongst us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.